So in order for us to tell if any of these efforts are taking root, well, we'll have the statistics, the insights, the analytics to back it up. Let's return to page one. Nowadays, it's harder to be found by potential clients. There is just so much competition. The best advice to rank, however, comes straight from the search engines themselves. So we will get a lot of uh, tips and advice, do's and don'ts, from the search engines themselves. But they won't give every secret away. They won't give away exactly how their algorithm works, the way that they rank everything. Because the search engines are in competition. Google is competing with Bing. Bing is co competing with DuckDuckGo, and DuckDuckGo is competing with Google. They're all competing to find the best search results for a particular search term. So the algorithm is what ranks, what ranks you. And the search engines are going to say, well, what are the signals that affect your ranking and such? Notice here I've got a section for Google Webmaster Tools and a section for Bing Webmaster Tools. And then I've got a link right at the top, Webmaster Guidelines, and down here, Webmaster Guidelines for Bing. So both of those are direct links to the, the website where you can get all of that information. What we're going to do is, we're going to start with Bing first, just because usually um, people don't have much experience with it. And uh, once we learn what we can about it, we will apply what we learn to Google, and it's just about the same. But uh, very first thing, so we'll go to Bing section here. Bing, a rival search engine, and one that is rising, has its own advice to help webmasters rank well on their results page. You'll find that many of the same concepts apply to both search engines with minor variations. So once you learn techniques and such for one search engine, it, they should be applicable to the other. And so what we've got here is that we're going to uh, add and verify a site we're going to, together, we're going to create an account at Bing Webmasters. And then we're going to link your site with your account on Bing. And that's free. Your Webmaster tools are all free. We're going to link them together. And then we're going to verify with the search engines. You are the legitimate owner of that website. In order for them to them give us traffic stats user demographic stats, all of that. We'll do that together, of course. One important thing to do when we set all of this up is to work with sitemaps. Sitemaps are a, a special file that defines every page on your site. So it's a map of your site. And it's not a drawing, it's a text file. But this is actually a bit difficult to do. So I mentioned here, if you're using WordPress, we've got a plugin called WordPress SEO by Yoast. And they will create a sitemap for you with the click of a button. Because a sitemap is a technically complex document that lists all your pages, yes, but it lists them in the hierarchy that they are. It lists when they were last updated and all of the links and everything. So it's not just a simple list of your pages. Therefore, I, I don't recommend making your own, but you can go to sitemaps.org and read the documentation and try to do it on your own, but really, even myself that I've been doing this since the year 2001, I'm not going to try. It's complicated. There's going to be a plugin on WordPress or a plugin on Joomla or Drupal or Wix or Squarespace. Whatever system you have, it'll be relatively easy to do, unfortunately, except Dreamweaver, because that one is an older style web software, so to make a sitemap in Dreamweaver might be complicated. I in which? No, but in which software? Joomla. In Joomla, okay, yeah, exactly. Yeah, with Joomla, definitely. Uh, so, um, think about this. If you go to a brand new mall, and you're looking for a particular store, how many of you are going to wander around the whole mall until you find it? As opposed to, how many of you are going to go to, this, to the mall directory, look for it in the, in the color coding, and then walk right to it? So, so either method could work for some people, but 
I think many people perhaps, you know, I don't want to waste time, I want to get to the place. Here's the store, the, the mall map. Well, that's the same thing with our, with our website. The search engines will go through every page and scan every page and categorize you and all of that. But if we provide them a site map that has the listings of all of our pages, when they were last updated, and all the links, then the search engines won't have to wander your page aimlessly, use up your resources, and all of that. They will know about everything about your website, and therefore when someone searches, uh, you know, handmade organic hemp cat beds, then they will find your product faster. We'll do this also together. Bing has a screen that we'll look at called Link Additional Sites. Modern SEO is not just about what you do on your site, it's about what you do outside your site. This is SEM. In short, this means your business should be active on social media like Facebook, Twitter, etc. Bing provides a screen for you to add all your additional sites. At the moment, Google doesn't. So on Bing, this is a little variation. If we go to the screen that I'll show you, it'll say, okay, add your Facebook, add your Twitter, add your Pinterest, add your app, add this, that, and, on, and everything, and therefore Bing can know more in total about your online presence so that you can rank higher than your competitors on Bing. And as I said, it's the second biggest search engine. It's got about 20% market share. It's going to be the default, if not already, of the iPhone. It's in my friend's Prius built in. It's built into all Windows computers, so Bing is increasing market share. And if we do everything that we can to optimize according to their tips, we'll appear more often on Bing. The direct link to do all of this is on this link right here, bing.com slash toolbox. Let's go ahead and click that. Um, it might ask you to allow the link. Go ahead and allow, and that will take you to your web browser to bing.com slash toolbox. How many of you currently have a Hotmail email address? Does anyone have a live.com email address? Or maybe an outlook.com email address? Any of these Microsoft email addresses gives you access to this. If you don't have a Microsoft email address, you can still get access to this, no problem. So if you click there and it takes you to bing.com slash toolbox, technically toolbox slash webmaster, but we're there. And it says drive more visitors to your site using Bing data and tools. Sign in or sign up. And it also says sign up now and we'll give you $100 credit for search advertising on the Yahoo Bing network. That's that pay per click. Remember that I said we can do it the easy way, the hard way. The hard way is what we'll be talking about. The easy way is you start to pay for placement and visibility and all of that. Bing gives you $100 to start off with. So on this screen here, um, it kind of sells itself why you would care what's in it for you. On the right side, key resources, submit your site to Bing. We won't do it this way, we'll do it the other way. Verify guidelines for sitemaps the Bing sitemap plugin. Hey, maybe I need that because my particular web solution doesn't create a, a sitemap. Bing places for business. I'm a physical location and therefore I need special consideration in that I want to appear on the Bing maps. You know, Bing has their own maps. There's not just Google maps, there's Bing maps and other ones. Remember, what was the other, other famous maps? Um, MapQuest. Remember MapQuest and all of those are still around, so if you optimize for them, that could benefit you. Webmaster guidelines, webmaster help and how-to guides. Again, all of the information is here. I'm not going to go through these screens. You should look at them, maybe, you know, put them on your phone or tablet, curl up by the fireplace and read them with a nice glass of wine, a nice Shiraz, and um, just read them and understand about them, because these things change. Email support. Something's going wrong? You can contact them. You can contact Google also. Actually talk to people on the phone and such. But anyway, what we'll do here, if you've got already a live account, an Outlook account, a Hotmail account, just click sign in. I'm going to assume for a moment I don't have one. So I'm going to show you that screen briefly. 
Either way you want to do this, I'm going to click sign up. I don't have an account. Click sign in and then just wait a moment for us to catch up. Or I'm going to click sign up and I don't have an account. Mine's a little slow, but yours may then show you a screen. Please fill this stuff out. It's going to ask you your name. It's going to ask you to create or use an existing email. Uh, password. Here we go. It's asking for first name, last name, username. So you can create a brand new email address, victor at hotmail.com, or I can use my existing victor at gmail.com. That'll work. Create a password. Choose your region, birth date. You might say, well, this is a lot of information that it's asking me. It might be, but it's going to be important information related to your business. So you should fill it in accurately and legitimately so that if you lose access to it, you will be able to retrieve it via your identity. Question? Yeah, you mentioned that. Uh it's important because it's information related to your business, but if you're doing this for someone else, mm -hmm. do you want to use their email? Either or, but what I'm going to say in the real world, my company, myself or someone else in my company, we have accounts here. We create this account for the client under our name, and then we can give access to the client. They don't have to log in with our credentials. And therefore, let's say a few years later, okay, they, they want to move on to another company. Great. We will detach ourselves from their access, and then they can give access to someone else. So it doesn't, it's no problem for you to um, do this for them in your name. You're an authorized representative, and then you can give them access, and uh, they can revoke access if necessary. So it asks birthday and gender, help us protect your info. Uh, again, if you lose access you or you get hacked, uh, you could still retrieve your account if you've got a phone number attached. Maybe someone guessed your password, but then if you've got a phone number attached, they don't, they don't have your phone number. That's another security method. So that's why that would be useful. I've never been called by them. They've never called me to say, why don't you buy this? Why don't you invest in ads? I've never been bothered by them. It does seem to work as advertised as a security feature. You want to then confirm the CAPTCHA right there. It's really hard to see, so you might say, give me a new one. You have to try a couple of times. They're getting really bad, yeah. That's a little better. DXSM VQ8S3, I think. <laughs> so um, then this one, you can turn this one off if you'd like. Send me promotional offers for Microsoft. You can subscribe at any time. Maybe you can leave it on, see what these sorts of emails are, and then decide, never mind. And at the bottom, click subscribe. Or maybe these offers are useful to you, actually. So you have to decide what you like there. Take a moment to do that. If you need any help, call me over. Um, so either sign in or create an account and then wait and then I'll log in and I'll show you what to do next. And then help Usually at this point in the class when we look at this stuff, I'll be able to tell you as much as I can in general. But people come in here all the time with different kinds of website software. Sometimes it's Dreamweaver, sometimes it's WordPress, Joomla, Wix, Drupal. Uh, Squarespace, etc. And so people come in here with a variety of ways to make a website. I've built in time to help people in the region. Well, that extra time, right? 
So you can have zero website on the account. Yes, this account here is going to uh, can store several websites, several properties, and, and track everything. So it's very useful. It's not that you need one account per website. You can use one account for multiple websites. So go ahead and either sign up or sign in. Let me sign in, and I'll show you what it looks like. You can. So let me answer that in full right here. But the short answer is that yes, you can have multiple websites and multiple clients. Um, mine is loading up here, but you see in general I have here multiple clients from different, you know, different websites. Uh, so this one account, I have the different sites. And I can give access to other people in my team and, of course, the client themselves. Um, if this were loading up properly, it would then show these statistics here with this. So uh, I would get some general statistics. You don't have any of this at the moment. We'll add a site in just a moment. But in general, these, these are what this is what you'll see under Bing Webmaster and something similar under Google Webmasters. Uh, so for example, this particular client here clicks from search, 125% increase, appeared in search, 60% increase, pages crawled, 30% increase, pages index, zero, no change. Within the time period of 30 days, which I can change here, it's telling me this, these are some quick stats. This is saying that that particular client, more people have clicked it when it's appeared on search. But it's appeared on search perhaps less than the previous month. Than the previous month. Keep that in mind, the time horizon. Pages crawled. That means that the search engine, Bing, has visited the site and crawled it and found new content. Something new, perhaps. Um, it defines new content in different ways because that's why in this particular client it hasn't indexed anything, it hasn't saved anything. The index 
is the search engine's term for the database that it has on your site, the index. So other examples. Again, more clicks from search there, appeared a little bit less in search. This one dropped a few clicks. It appeared a little bit more on search, but it's been clicked a little bit less. Uh, so you see up and down and so forth. If I go to a longer time horizon, I get more insights because just seven days might not be a lot of insight. Maybe I have all positive numbers, but that's only one week. If I go to 30 days and then I have all negative numbers, that's not so good. But then if I go to th three months and they're all positive, that's good. So you have to be, uh, you, you might be too zoomed in. You want to zoom out for more time and that'll give you a bigger picture of how your traffic is is doing. So if I have this, let's say at three months, take a quick look. So notice it has appeared. That was a negative number before, and now it's a positive number in three months. It's appeared more times in search and in from the previous three months. From the previous three months, it's also been clicked on more times. How many more times? When I click to view the details, it'll give me the details. But in general, I'm just seeing some quick stats right here. Oops. So, again, more clicks. Sometimes it's a little glitchy right here. It says infinite. Then it must be dividing some numbers within some other numbers. I give you a weird number. But that's a very, very, very new website, so it's not quite accurate yet. This one over here, this, this site has increased also. More clicks. Hmm, a few clicks are down there too. And a few clicks are down on that one. So once I once I see this and, and I see am I do I have an upward trend? Do I have a downward trend? I can then start to strategize and maybe fully implement my marketing plan, change my marketing plan, put more efforts in, but I wouldn't know that I would need to do this until I've set up the webmaster tools. So you don't have any websites here, probably. Let's set up a website. At the very top, you should say add a website. So type in the address to your website. I'm going to type in the address of your currently existing website. If you don't have a website yet, you can do this a little later. add and then it says okay well some of you might have a, a screen with more that asks you more information I can't exactly show you that screen because I've already set this before but it might does anyone see some other screen that kind of asks you like 20 things yeah what, what does that screen say what do a few of those things say okay yeah so just a little bit more information of you as the webmaster and owner of the site so I can't exactly show it to you but if it asks you a bit more information fill that in as best as possible Again, because it'll give you the most accurate information, the better you fill it in. Most of us maybe see this screen here. It says, add your sitemap. I don't have a sitemap yet, so I cannot add it. I will be able to add it later. But notice right away it's asking, where's your sitemap? Because it's so important. And then it says, when do you receive the most traffic to this site for your local time of the day? Well, I don't know that. Webmaster Tools will tell me that. When do I get the most traffic throughout the day for my site? Why would I need to know that? Little info box right here. Bing Bot Crawl Control. To help Bing optimize its crawl behavior of your site, you can select when your site receives the most traffic by selecting it. We will generally try to crawl your page less during the times that you have more visitors. You can always add or update this info later. So. The search engines, Bing and Google, are both going to be connecting, in a sense, to your site, interacting with it, interfacing with it on a regular basis. Therefore, there are going to be connections. There's going to be traffic to your site from the search engines. If the, um, if the amount of traffic that's coming to your site is um, most prevalent during the time of 4 a.m. to 9 a.m., let's say, then we're telling you, Bing, don't visit our site as much at that time to slow my site down. 
maybe you've got the, the standard 9 to 5 traffic pattern. So if we select that, Bing would check on our site less during that time. I don't know what time is most popular on my site at the moment, so I'll leave it on all day. So would this information about me change with every web time you include in there? Uh, it could, but notice on mine, it's not asking me that because again, it's it's going to be asking you your information as the web, as the designated as the designated webmaster. So if you're going to do this for future websites, you may or may not need to change. So I can use it with one time. Mm -hmm. So as we fill this out, some of us it says a work preference. Do we need those checked? One says crawl errors, and it says site maps. Okay, one of the check marks that you might see is about that alerts. I would leave them all on because the search engines are then going to tell you, being especially, it's telling you if there's a crawl error, meaning broken links. If there is, what, what's another one there? Um, index issues. Index issues. Malware. Malware. If there's malware on your site, I want Bing to send me an email about it to fix it. And I believe then it asks you the frequency. Decide what you'd like, but I want to learn about it right away. So again, I can't show you on my screen here, but if it asks you some of those things like that, then I would turn that on. And we can, if you don't see that screen, we can change it on another screen. But what it shows you there is pretty useful. I'm going to click Add. And then it comes here. Verify. Trust, but verify. Um, the, the thing is, like in the real world, if someone asks me, where do you live? And I say, oh, up on that mansion in La Jolla. Well, they're not going to believe me until I walk up to, the, to that mansion and un unlock the front door and walk in. Same thing here. I could have put in the website address of my competitor to maybe see what their traffic is like, but I would be stopped right here. They would be stopped right here. Because again, what's to stop your competitor from setting up Webmaster Tools to see your traffic? This is what's to stop them. Only you can verify that you have access to that website this way. There's three ways to do it. Like I said, I walked into my mansion with that key. We're going to talk about doing that right here metaphorically on your website. Three ways. I would say ignore step three. I've been doing this for years and even I think step three is hard. So I would not do step three, even though it seems like, oh, well, GoDaddy's listed right here. Let me select GoDaddy. This is just going to give you instructions on how to do this with GoDaddy. It's not really going to do it. Because it says, okay, in your GoDaddy, add a CMN <coughs> alias and a DNS will resolve to this. What does that mean? It popped up a link to tell you what that means. It doesn't really do it. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't try that. Don't do number three. We have number one and number two. Two possible ways. I'll talk about them in general. And then, like I said, I, if you're able to do it in class, I would like you to try. If you're having trouble, I'm glad to help you. That's what I set up part of the time for today. But here are the two steps. One is, number one, if you've got access to your login, uh, to your file manager, you know, FTP or your GoDaddy file manager or your Bluehost file uploader, number one might work best for you. This is saying, click to download that file, and then you're going to log in to your server. You're going to use FTP, you're going to use the GoDaddy file manager, whatever. You're going to log in, and then you're going to upload that file to your website. And then at the bottom, there's a button that says Verify. Bing will then look for the Bing site auth.xml file on your site. And if it found it, you're verified. If it didn't find it, you're not verified. Obviously, your competitor does not have login to your files, does not have login information to your, to your server. So they would not be able to upload this file. They don't have the key to your house. One method is this way. Upload a file to your server. 
that file that it's telling you right there. The other way is if you have a login to actually edit to your site. That's a little different. If you can log in and edit your site, add a new page, change colors, this one, this method might work. It's saying this, this line of code here in gray, you're going to copy it, and you're going to paste it into your website in the section of headings. You just paste it, meta name, Microsoft validate, with your unique identifier. Again, your competitor does not have an access to edit your site. Only you do. You edit your site, you paste this code, you come back to Bing and you click verify, and then if it didn't work, you'll get a big red X right there. If it did work, it'll take you back to the screen where it showed all of my sites. Like that. So either of those two methods is what we'll need to do. If you're able to do so, try it. I'm going to pause for a moment. Raise your hand, call me over. Maybe you kind of know how to do it, but you need a little help. I'm ha happy to help. So let's do a, a little helping break here.